hi guys, Daddy's taking you in the Bahamas. <laughs> Better be good. <laughs> The fun in the sun and the beaches are great, of course, but there's also lots of history to the island. We'll find the best places to enjoy the sun and the surf, encounter wildlife, and learn about the culture in... Token Bahamas! Travel. Who says it can't be done with the kids? Well, many have, and we're here to prove otherwise. Here's our story. Sometime after college and before being grown-ups, we, that's me, and that's me, left it all behind for one year to see the world. With a one-way ticket in hand, we had a grand adventure across 35 countries. Fast forward five years, a house payment, real jobs, and a different sort of adventure called parenthood. With these guys, that's me, I'm Nathan and I'm seven. That's me, I'm Janice and I'm five. Now we're off again to share our adventures with you as we discover the wonders of the world, the wonders of nature, the wonders of parenthood, and sometimes wonder, what were we thinking in Travel with Kids? In this episode, join us as we explore the main island of the Bahamas, New Providence, meeting locals, both on land and in the sea. You will hold it here. And trying to find some time to fit in some relaxation. Ah, some time out away from the kids. You can just sit here and relax. Plus find out who's for dinner. You had to stay on a rope so they didn't bite you. And what this guy's trying to tell us. Silly doll. Home to the city of Nassau and the center of the Bahamas, the island of New Providence is the most popular Bahamian island. Located central to the Bahamas' main tourist islands, this smaller island acts as a hub for travel to the farther flung destinations in the Bahamas. The island's north coast holds the bulk of the tourist attractions, with the glitzy mega hotels, shops and yachts on Paradise Island, the beehive of museums and markets in Nassau, and the exciting beachfront activities of Cable Beach. Tons of flights arrive in Nassau International Airport each day with huge deals out of Florida and New York. We've chosen a flight from Fort Lauderdale, which is just about 30 minutes on Bahamas Air. At the airport, there's an ATM that works with our card, so we get out some local cash Bahama dollar. and hop a cab to our hotel. We're staying at the Sheraton Cable Beach Resort, situated on one of the island's most spectacular stretches of white sand. The hotel is far enough away from town to provide a relaxing getaway, but close enough to take advantage of all the fun and history of Nassau. Arr! From our balcony, you can see all the exciting beach activities down on Cable Beach. Cable Beach was named after the first transatlantic communications cable. There's kayaking, parasailing, jet skiing, and since it's our first day here, we've decided to kick back, relax, and enjoy some beach time. It's always good to build in some downtime on your travel days, but with all the activities here, I'm not sure how much downtime we'll actually get. At the pool, the kids quickly make friends of the human and critter type, and with all the waterfalls and coves in the pool, it's hard to convince them to wander down the beach. But some beachfront ping pong and checkers helps draw them out. The beach here is gorgeous. A pale pink hue stretches along for miles, meeting the calm turquoise waters. The kids have a great time splashing in the waves. Can I go out where it's deeper? Uh -huh. And the water is so calm, it's the perfect place to just sit and relax. But if you're the more active type, there's plenty of fun beach and water activities too. The 
kids want to go back to the beach today, but we've made an appointment with some Finn friends on a private island just off the coast. So we're going to take a bus into Nassau, check out the town, and then take a ferry to Paradise Island. Buses run constantly up and down the road behind our hotel. It costs just one dollar to take the bus into town, and we're there in just about ten minutes. Nassau is the hub of activity for the Bahamas. In the old part of town, narrow, cobbled streets wind past two-story stone buildings that house museums and restaurants serving typical Bahamian cuisine, conch fritters, native soup. As you head down the street, this rich culture gives way to upscale designer boutiques and duty-free shops. Just down from the bus stop, the kids spot the Pirates of Nassau Museum. And with the raindrops starting to fall, a museum is a good pick right now. The Bahamas are in the tropics, so be sure to prepare for all sorts of weather, heat, and the afternoon rainstorms. This museum looks to be especially fun. And let's face it, any museum featuring massive wooden ship battles and wild eye pirates arr, arr, is sure to draw the attention of the little guys. Pirates. And it's a great way for us to learn a bit of Bahamian history. 1716 is the year that you're going into. By 1716, the British had a settlement in Nassau for almost 50 years. Due to the lawless sea routes of the Caribbean, it was quickly overrun by pirates and outlaws. Dirt streets were lined with wild taverns where troublemaking buccaneers planned their next raid. Fed up with the pirate attacks on their fleet, the Spanish and French forces attacked Nassau in the late 16 and early 1700s, but to no avail. It wasn't until the mid-1700s that pirates were finally expelled by the British themselves. And with the new British governor came order and civility. Swamps were drained, the streets were laid out, and government was established. The museum portrays pirates in a very innovative way with still life scenes depicting events in that town's history. Board a real pirate boat, a recreation of Blackbeard's boat, Queen Anne's Revenge, and see what it was like to live like a buccaneer complete with rats in the kitchen and plenty of weapons. With all these weapons... That one's a real good one because it has the sharpest point. It's no wonder there were so many one-legged, no-handed, one-eyed pirates. Didn't their mom ever tell them they could poke an eye out? That's a real hook. Another room shows what happened in Nassau when the British resumed control and put an end to piracy with the King's Order, Expulsus Piratus, Restituta Commercia. Pirates expelled, commerce restored. A slogan that still remains a part of the nation's official seal. Outside the museum, a small courtyard is perfect for relaxing. Ah, some time out away from the kids. Or better yet, if the kids are acting up. That's good with the king's um put their kids in time out in these things. Nice thinking, Nathan. The courtyard also has pirate cutouts that make for great photo opportunities, cannons for crawling on, a tavern, and a cool gift shop. But shiver me timbers, look at the time. If we're gonna catch that ferry to Paradise Island, we'd best be making tracks. Let's go. Can I come out of time out yet? When we come out of the museum, the rain is still coming down hard. I'm glad we brought our rain jackets. The streets are even starting to flood. Too bad we didn't pack our galoshes as well. To get to the ferry, we walk through the very crowded straw market. It is supposedly the best place to get Bahamian crafts on the island, but it feels more like a tourist trap than a true encounter with the local sellers. Especially when a cruise ship is in port and it gets very crowded. Sometimes it's best to get off the main tourist track for the most authentic crafts and for a better buying experience. Plus, you'll probably save some money by buying from smaller, independent sellers. Is that made out of two coconuts? Hey, glue. But they're... Ta -da! The boys do manage to pick out a couple of necklaces. How many you want to buy? I'll give, I'll give you a deal. And just like that, the rain stopped and the sun's shining. Perfect for our cruise over to Paradise Island. On the harbor side of the straw market is the dock for the ferry boats. You can get your tickets here, and ours is just about to leave. 
The ride only takes about five minutes, and the driver gives a bit of area information along the way. Nassau is only the downtown area. The name of the island has no providence. 21 miles long, 7 miles wide. Paradise Island is actually part of New Providence, connected by a bridge. Paradise Island is famous for the mega resort Atlantis. We enter Atlantis Resort through what's touted as a village market. It's a far cry from the craft market across the street, but gives us a good idea of the immense size and lavishness of Atlantis Paradise Island. Even if you're not staying at the resort, you can buy a day pass to take advantage of its 141-acre waterscape. They call it Aqua Adventure, and we're all really excited to try it out. But first, we have to get there. How come it's so big? It seems like we've been walking over the entire island. Although the kids are dressed to get wet, our first underwater experience is actually going to keep us dry. We're going to explore Atlantis's marine habitat below ground. Now this isn't your doctor's office aquarium. Think 5,000 marine animals from over 200 different species. Underwater tunnels, touch pools, and hands-on exhibits. This is a great way to introduce the kids to local marine life here in the Bahamas. Here we have the dig. This is an aquatic museum with 15 chambers showing you how the Atlanteans may have lived some 11,000 years ago. The tanks are really cool. Inside an underwater city sits abandoned, taken over by marine creatures. It makes you feel like a marine archaeologist. If you were scuba diving and you found a lost city, that's what it would look like. You'd see like all the buildings and stuff from the river. Hey, Shane was suspicious looking at you. <laughs> the life in the tanks is amazingly diverse. Schools of colorful tiny fish, huge bat fish. It's like that big. Giant rays gliding through the water. Look how big that is. It's a stingray. It's not a manta ray. How come there's fish under it? Other tanks hold slimy creatures. It's a fish. Eel. And some creatures that look single cell. Yeah. Or prehistoric. Seahorsey. That's a seahorse. And then this is a crab. Look at the yellow seahorse. There's even a touch pool where the kids can get a good idea of what some of the animals feel like. For kids, they have that chance to interact, touch the starfish, see the actual conch, because most people think that the conch is just a shell. Until we hold it up, there's an actual conch inside of it. Here's the bottom of it. Look at all its little legs. Tanks are so mammoth, it's hard to imagine all the work that goes into feeding and caring for all those fish. Sherry offers us a behind the scenes peek at how it all gets done. Inquire at the hotel, sometimes kids are allowed to go below ground to check it all out. We venture deep below the hotel. First stop is the fish hospital, where animals come when they're having a whale of a problem. The hospital is also where they nurse the newborn fish. Those are the babies. Whoa, that's a big fish. What is it? Catfish, I think. Next door to the hospital is the underwater cafeteria. It's where they prep all the food to feed the 50,000 animals every day. The first question is, how do they feed that giant manta? Bucket, 10 pound bucket. Of uh, squid, then we grind up krill, we put it in a bucket and dump it in our mouth. We run the bucket along, it just opens the mouth and we pour it in. What's that? What's that? That's krill. What's that? For what? It's like, I think that's for the manta ring. What's that? Shrimp. And this is for the eagle rays, that's squid. And that's for the sharks. That's for the sharks? Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, what did he just say? That's for the sharks. I don't remember seeing any sharks in the tank. Wouldn't they eat all the other fish? 
or at least uh, bother them a little bit. The guide explains that the shark tank is separate and there's a slide that goes right through the middle of it. Now this I've got to see. The shark slide, better known as the leap of faith. A 60 foot almost vertical drop down the side of a recreated Mayan temple. The slide is part of the massive aqua venture. A water park with mind boggling slides, a lazy river with rapids and conveyor belts to bring you back to the top. That's really a lazy river. And huge play areas with climbing nets, water cannons. Water pouring it in it, and sometimes it jumps on, on the whole entire playground. Well, I'm sure the kids would love to hang out here all day, but we want to get even closer to some marine animals. So we're off to hop another boat to Blue Lagoon Island just 20 minutes away. Also known as Salt Key, this privately owned island is amazing. White sand beaches, a turquoise lagoon, palm trees. It's hard to believe this is so close to the sometimes overdeveloped areas around Nassau. And yet this seems almost untouched. Pathways surrounded by lush greenery lead to the place where our hosts for the day live. Dolphins. After a short introduction, 11 of our 19 dolphins were born right here at Dolphin Encounters. The Atlantic bottlenose dolphin can reach up to 500 pounds and up to 9 feet in length, right? We go out onto a platform just a few feet from the dolphins and watch them do tricks. It's amazing how fast and graceful they are, jumping so high into the air, flipping around. Then the dolphins invite us to play in the water with them. We slide into the water with our new fin friends. It's love at first sight for the kids as we get to greet the dolphins with hugs and kisses and splash around enjoying some playtime dolphin style. After our free swim, it's time for the dolphins to get serious and teach us a thing or two. As they push us by the feet through the water, raising us above the water so we can tail walk just like them. Back on the platform, the kids say goodbye to the dolphins and make some silly faces. Silly doll. Hey, I think that one's giving me some lip. Or would it be beak? These dolphins sure have a good sense of humor. We all really enjoyed learning about the dolphins and seeing some of the behaviors you would see in wild dolphins as well. They are ambassadors for marine mammals all over the world. Uh, when people come here, they're eager to learn about conservation, about what you can do by conserving and recycling and taking care and keeping pollution from being in the oceans to take care of the animals home. Say bye dolphins.
On the boat ride back, all the kids are chatting away about what they like the best. It was amazing. I never saw a dolphin that close. He splashed me and he was like, <coughs> Oh, he got to you too? Glad to see I'm not the only one. From Paradise Island, it's a short ferry and bus ride back to the room for a quick slice of pizza before bed. Sometimes on long days like this, it's nice to just pick up dinner and relax on the balcony instead of enduring dinner at a restaurant with kids, which in itself can be energy <laughs> and wallet zapping. There are lots of inexpensive restaurants that line the street just behind the hotel. We sit and eat the pizza and talk about all the experiences we had today. And while everyone loved the dolphins, we decided we want to get a little crazier tomorrow and hunt down some wild animals in the open ocean. Today we're heading out to the west end of the island for a snorkel tour with Stuart Cove. While the location is a bit out of the way, 45 minutes from downtown Nassau, <laughs> their experience in the ocean here is definitely worth it. These are the guys the big film houses turn to when they need underwater production. They shot for the last three James Bond movies and, even more impressive to the kids, Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean 2 and 3 and Flipper. As soon as we get to Stuart Coves, it's obvious why this has been the site of so many films. The long wooden docks and cottages lying over the still waters of the inlet really make you feel like you're on a tiny Caribbean outpost. Hey, wait a minute, we are in a tiny Caribbean outpost. Kids are fitted with snorkels and fins as the guides give a quick snorkel lesson. On the way to the snorkel spot, we stop for a little starfish spotting. A starfish! And one of the guides even jumps in the water to bring one up to the surface for a closer look. All right, look up. Just, just hold it up like that. Before we tie up at a shallow reef for a face-to-fish encounter. The boys are eager to get started, and the guide makes it even better by giving the kids a treat for the fish. The underwater scenes are great. Big schools of bright yellow and shiny blue fish sway together in the current, reflecting the sunlight as they turn. I see fishes. Little fish like that big. Fish food. We're all swarming around us like on a mat. A shy puffer fish ducks under a big hunk of bumpy coral. Brown coral, brown, brown coral. And the really cool thing is that most of the life is just a few feet below us. A little further down, Nathan and I make a really cool discovery. A sunken boat. With all the pirate history around here, we wonder whose boat it is. Maybe Blackbeard returning with a boatload of plundered gold. A sunken treasure guarded by pacing sharks. But alas, no time to find out as the guide calls us in to our next stop. Well, we may not have got the treasure part right, but we painted part of that picture correctly. I'd like to welcome you to your third and final destination. <laughs> Sharks here? Just below the surface of the water, dark brown gray shadows swim nervously circling the bait, er, I mean snorkelers. The guides let us know that those with enough nerve would be allowed to jump in and swim around with them. So if I get in, the shark surrounding me? Well, boys will be boys. You don't have to ask our boys twice. They don their mask and hop right in. Dangling as fish bait above the menacing looking creatures. I got to swim with sharks. They were just down low swimming around a sunken shipwreck. You had to stay on a rope so they didn't bite you, and they fed on And though these sharks were being fed deep below to keep them away from, well, us, after the snorkelers are out of the water, the guides lure them to the surface to show us the real power of those jaws. If you jump in now, you would get a free pink Stuart Club t-shirt. <laughs> Any volunteers? Fish food and 
them and then all the saw. fish came and then all the sharks ate the fish. Yeah. And then they dumped, and then on the shark one they dumped fish food in and then the fish started getting the fish and then the sh shark started eating the fish. Inciting a major feeding frenzy right off the back of our boat. And after watching how vicious those sharks can get, we asked the boys which they like swimming with better, sharks or dolphins. I like the shark one the best. They both have their benefits. The shark snorkel is adventurous and wild. You feel like a real marine explorer. But with the dolphins, you get a chance to get your hands on them. It really depends on what you're looking for. At our request, the shuttle drops us off at a small market near the hotel. The selection of crafts is similar to the big market in town, but the atmosphere is much more laid back. Hey. <laughs> is it hot, Monica? Very hot. Feel As the local Did sellers joke this? with the boys. Taste <laughs> <Pace> it. <laughs> and they get to meet some local kids. Next door to the market, a smoothie stand whips up drinks in all sorts of tropical flavors. Coconut, mango, papaya. But I sense a feeding frenzy coming on. So it's across the street to Cafe Johnny Canoe Restaurant to try some local cuisine, like conch fritters. This is a really fun, festive restaurant. The walls are covered in Junkanoo masks and costumes. What is Junkanoo, you may ask? It's one of the world's biggest parties and it's held right here in the Bahamas in late December or early January. Huge groups of people in colorful feathered and sequined costumes dance to goombe music all night, banging drums and cowbells and tooting horns as they parade through town. While we're here at the wrong time of year to experience a junkanoo, the festive atmosphere and friendly, fun-loving people give us an idea of what it